Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what he has done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. There's a maths problem that goes something like this. There's a snail that falls down a hole that's 10 metres deep. The snail wants to get out, and each day the snail climbs three metres up the hole, but overnight slides two metres back. The question is, how many days does it take the snail to get out of the hole? Try and work it out, and there'll be the answer at the end of this video. Peter, in the reading from Matthew's Gospel that we've just heard, is a bit like that snail. He takes a step forward, but then falls back. In the previous few verses, which we talked about last week, Peter professed that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus' response is that he calls him Peter. He gives him the keys of the kingdom of heaven and says that on this rock I will build my church. Now, in those verses that we've just heard, Peter hears that his Lord must suffer and die and says, no, Jesus, this must never happen. Jesus' response is harsh. He says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block. What a contrast to those words a few verses earlier. The rock on which the church is to be built, Peter, now becomes a stumbling block to Jesus. But what's changed? Peter's done nothing wrong. But what he has done wrong is to think the wrong things. His thoughts, which were tuned to the divine, have now become earthly or domesticated. He becomes protective of Jesus and cannot begin to even comprehend that the suffering and the death of Jesus are part of the vocation of the Messiah. He cannot grasp that the life of Jesus must include vulnerability. Peter only hopes for success. The last few months have revealed our vulnerability, and to a certain extent we're still really living with it now. We may want to deny it, we may want to ignore it, but we can't. The world has changed. We can't go back to how it was. We need to build, to find and to live a new normal. And if you're anything like me, that's a hard thing to grasp. It takes time. It takes effort. We have to learn new things, new ways of doing things. We have to do the same things, but differently. And to make it harder, the advice that we give and keeps on changing. The difference seems to be changing. In the coming week or so, teachers and students will all be returning to school and it'll be a very different experience. There'll be the constant sanitising of hands. There'll be one-way systems around the classroom and the corridors, whether masks are decided to be worn or not. 
there'll be classroom bubbles of children that need to stay together and to learn together. And that's just what I can think of off the top of my head. We've got used to queuing for shops. We're getting used to the wearing of masks, though I still have to remember to take one with me when I go out. And then there's that social distancing, one metre plus, which can entail sidestepping round people or doing a little dance, skirting round them. And our church services are different too. They're shorter, which for some may be a better thing. And there's no singing for the time being, although there is music because we can play videos. There's less time to chat too. And we have to think consciously about where we sit, who we sit with, or who we sit away from. In all this, we're acknowledging our vulnerability and we're learning to live with it. We're making the changes that we have to for the good of ourselves and for the good of one another. But look back from where we've come, from that lockdown in March through April into May and beyond. We have moved forward. Although we feel it comes in fits and starts, especially according to the latest advice or guidance that we're given. But what we can't do is ignore it, because in doing that, we become a stumbling block to ourselves and others. And as we learn to live doing things differently, there'll be times when we succeed, but there'll also be days and occasions when we struggle and we do stumble. And in that sense, we'll be a bit like Peter. But look how Jesus treats Peter, because that reveals something of the nature of God to us, how God reaches out to us. Yes, Peter is rebuked. Yes, he's called a stumbling block. But in all of that, does Jesus take back the keys of the kingdom of heaven? No. Does Jesus retract the statement that on you I will build my church? No, he doesn't. We may lie be like Peter. We move forward two steps, but we move back one step. That's part of our journey of life. That's part of our learning. That's part of our discipleship. But in it and through it all, we are loved by God. We are blessed by God. That love can never be quenched. That blessing can never be cancelled. We move forward two steps. We make mistakes and move back one step. But in all, through all, God walks with us and we walk, we work, we live in God's power, in God's strength, in God's love and with God's blessing. Let's pray. Lord, grant me patience to endure, faith to trust in you joy to see you at work, and hope to believe that all will be well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.